Um, this is a uh, camera panning unit I built based on the instructables I found online. Um, I use most of the parts um, from Servo City and uh, eBay. Um, it runs off an Arduino, um, which is behind this LCD shield from Sane Smart. Um, the, the LCD shield gives it buttons and a display for controlling the unit. Um, the Arduino is mounted directly behind that. And then on the side, you can see the, the 5 volt stepper motor driver, which plugs into the Arduino, and uh, the 5 volt motor that's driving this pinion right here. Um, it's rotating the head right now in a program I have running. Um, it's powered off of um, Goal Zero uh, Guide 10 Plus. Um, that's providing USB power, and uh, yeah, you can see the head's slowly rotating right now. So let me show you how it all. Let me show you how first how to control it. I'm gonna zoom in on the LCD screen. Okay, now we're zoomed in on the LCD, and you can see the. Uh, I think you can see the uh, the text on the screen here. I'm gonna reset the program that I already have running. Hit the reset button. It'll start all over. And first I select the start point with the left control button, it's good, it's as good as any. And then I'll hit the end point. That's good enough. And then you can set the time. and. Uh, for the GoPro, I can get about an hour, maybe 70 minutes out of battery. You, know, you can scroll right up. I actually have no idea what the maximum number it will give you. I have 150, but I'm going to bring it back down to 5. And then hit select, and it'll start running the program and tell you how many minutes are left. And with the dry room, um I got off eBay, uh, with the motor, it actually has a nice little um, the blinking lights on the side here. Kind of show you what's going on. Um, when you're wiring everything up, it actually it's helpful to see them blink. Um, now I'll show you how it all goes together. I'll zoom back out and um, make it a little bit easier. Okay. Like I said, I'm using the um, the threaded uh, GoPro mount, and I'll just unscrew that. I'll power off the unit, turn the battery off, unplug it, and we'll move that aside for now. Um, I'll take the GoPro off, just spins off, and I probably could have used a smaller base. My idea was that I was going to directly mount the my SLR onto here. Instead, I have a small. Um, uh, tripod head that I put on there, so I really could have gone with a smaller base. Um, you can see the basic construction here. I'm using a Servo City um, a C shaped um, channel piece and an end. Um, and I'll take this apart and we'll show you how it all goes together as I go. Um, I have three ball bearings that I'm going to epoxy in place when I'm all said and done. I'll just pull this out. You can see the ball bearings come out and hold it in place. One of them fell down below. Um, the drive shaft is a quarter inch um, D shaft, but I could have gone with a round one. I, I went with the D because I was planning on using a different collar, um, and I instead went with a clamping collar, which is in between the uh, the 84 tooth gear and the Servo City. Um, four inch round servo mount. I epoxied in a quarter twenty bolt with some JB Weld um, that I got from Home Depot. That, uh, it's a pan head style and the quarter twenty you get from um, Home Depot I had to cut it to length because it was too long for a tripod 
but it actually fits perfectly in this hole um, in the servo mount so that when you put it in there you don't have to worry about centering it. It fits perfect. Um, I countersinked the screws so that they're flush. Um, I did the same on the bottom of the uh, 84 tooth gear. These are both countersunk. Um, when I first put it on there um, I didn't have uh, enough pan head screws and I, there's actually a, a ring around here where the first screws I had that were holding everything together rubbed against the um, the bottom of the gear. Um, the 12 tooth uh, spur gear, pinion gear that I have hooked up to the uh, the 5 volt motor came from eBay, like five dollars. Um, but this is pretty self-explanatory how it goes together. It's shaft, gear, the gear is screwed onto the collar, collar is clamped onto the shaft, and the uh, four inch servo plate from Servo City is screwed to the collar as well. Um, and that is just epoxy to the servo um, plate. So I can actually take this off and swap it out. So, um, put that aside. Yeah, like I said, it's got ball bearings, so it's really smooth. Um, and there's one more in here that fell out. I'm going to epoxy this one up in here too as well. And that'll keep everything lined up so that I don't get any wobble when this is in place. So with, every, with everything epoxied, it, it, you know, I shouldn't get any wobble on the unit, which is what I was worried about. Especially if I want to run my SLR on this. Um, pull that back out, pull the ball bearings off, and uh, I'll show you how the, um, the motor and all that is mounted. I'm not going to take, this is the Arduino right here, I'm not going to take this off. Um, I made the plates from some plastic that Servo City sells. Um, they sell two different thicknesses. This is the thicker of the two, and I just cut it by hand. Um, it's pretty square, but a sixteenth off here and there. And then when I screwed this stupid, uh, when I drilled this hole out, I, I was off. So this one shaft is off a little bit. It probably looks obvious in the in the video that it's the bottom is in a little bit. Um, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna epoxy in a quarter twenty um, nut in the bottom, so I can actually tripod mount this whole unit. Um, and there's enough torque with the gear reduction I'm doing, the seven to one, um, that I can mount it sideways and it can lift my SLR, which is a pretty good feat. My uh, my camera weighs in at close to three pounds with the lens, tripod had the little mini one, um, the camera body and the battery. So. You know, doing the gear reduction gives me a lot of power. So let me take this apart. Um, I'm just going to take the motor mount apart because that's the critical part. Um, like I said, everything else is pretty self-explanatory. So let me get my uh, screwdrivers out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the wire ties. I'll put new ones on afterwards to hold this driver in place. It's just held in with wire ties on the end here. Okay, and then the driver will come off. Come off. Okay, and the driver that came from eBay came with headers um, for the stepper motor and for the power. Um, I, uh, I removed those headers and directly wired side of my wires from the Arduino um, to the uh, stepper motor. I'm running the power connectors directly off of the um, 5 volts off the Arduino and uh, everything kind of just works. This goes to the stepper motor and I'm going to unplug this so I can take it all apart. Move this off to the side, and this should stay on there. So I'm going to take these screws out, there's little nuts in the back, and I'm going to need to use a pair of 
pair of pliers because they're um, nylon. There we go. Get that one off. And this one was the harder of the two. Okay, so I cut the video for a second while I uh, figured out how to get that little nut on the back. It's hard to get a pair of pliers in. I had to come in from the back side and do it. So I have the motor uh, mount now disconnected, and I should be able to slide it right out. And move that header off here. And I'll show you what I had to change um, on this. So in order to get this all to work, um, I ordered these little blocks from Servo City, and I'm not sure if you can see them on the inside to hold this end plate on. And I thought that they were actually designed for doing exactly what I'm doing here. And I was wrong. The holes don't line up. So I had to drill a new hole in the top and on the bottom in order to get this to work. There's probably a better end plate in order to make this assembly work right. Um, this is a three-hole C-shaped uh, panel they um, channel they make. Um, and this is really nice because when I mount the, uh, the drive pinion in, I'm just going to put the bearings in here. With the 84 tooth size, everything lines up so that it engages the motor perfectly when it's coming through the third hole over here. Um, there's no slop in there. In order to mount the motor, uh, I used one of the holes that are already pre-drilled and then I notched the edge of the seep channel over here and have just a screw and a nut holding it in place on the edge um, right over here and that keeps the motor in place. Um, and it looks like my pinion's working itself a little bit loose so I'm probably going to tighten that up. Um, so yeah, that, that this is basically the assembly for the for the motor mount. Um, the uh, you could also go with they have a, a standard channel, and that probably would have worked um, better. But I had changed my original design several times as I was building it. Um, you know, the regular C channel probably wouldn't have needed the end plate at all, but uh, it works. Um, the real critical thing with this is to make sure I get that bearing out. It's funny because you know they, they go in and out so easy and then when you want them to come out there it goes. Um, the bearings are the ones that have the lip on them so when they sit on things you now they hold in place. They're quarter inch by half and in the channel they fit and there's no slop. Um, let me take you over to the uh, the frame here. This is pretty critical uh, where these holes line up. Um, I oblonged this hole a bit where the pinion comes through so that I had some room to play um, and get the clearance I needed. And then on this other hole here it's a tiny bit bigger by maybe uh, you know, a 64th or 128th than the Servo City's half inch. So what I'm going to do for that, because I do I have the bearing in there, there's a tiny bit of slop, uh, I'm going to JB weld that bearing in place and then it won't, you know, it'll be perfect. Um, when I do that I will have everything in place and that'll keep everything lined up. I mean the amount of slop I'm talking about is yeah, 64th, 128th, it's really tiny. Um, so when I put the JB weld in, it's going to be a tiny, tiny bit of JB weld. Um, but in order to get all the, the holes lined up, let me get that bearing back out. Like I said, they're, they're easy to get in sometimes and hard other times. You can use the channel as your template for drilling. Um, and I would definitely use, I use a drill press for drilling these all out. Um, yeah, but using the channel as a template, you can be fairly accurate. Um, the one, the two mounting screw holes that uh, come through, 
I actually oblonged these holes out so that um, I had some room to play when I was mounting everything in. Um, initially I was rubbing a tiny bit on the edge of the frame right on this on the pinion hole um, and by oblonging these holes out where the screws go through I was able to move the motor mount just enough so that it doesn't touch because um, as you can see here it it's really close to the edge of the opening um, in that half inch opening um, so when you mount it through here it was just touching a tiny bit um, and in order to get rid of all the friction and all the rubbing I, I, I was able to oblong this out and everything still lines up nice um, you know, this was there's no instructables on how to build this and this so I, I kinda had to design it as I was going along um, so uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include a parts list on the parts I have um, you know for cutting you know I made the platform this particular size about four inches by four inches you know you can make it to whatever size you want I could actually make it about a half inch narrower um, and still have the clearance I need between the Arduino and the motor mount when it's in place. Um, so you can make it a little bit smaller. Um, yeah, I, initially I, I hadn't planned on, I, I planned on putting it in like a box and uh, I changed my design as I was going along and I had these uh, these shafts, these threaded shafts I was able to use. Um, I need to countersink these a bit more because um, these aren't flush. But uh, you know, using this, this is a pretty decent little setup. Um, and when it's on a surface, it's nice and flat and uh, doesn't have any side to side motion. So let me put it back together. And it's a bit of a, to get those screws in place with the nuts, is a bit of a. Oh, I'm going to shake, I'm going to stop because I'm going to tighten that thread up. And I got my Allen wrenches somewhere else. Okay, I was actually wrong. That's not. There was no slop in the uh, in the Allen screw. It's just a little bit of play in the shaft on the motor that comes up and down. So let me put it back together. So I this slides in place here, and I'm probably gonna cut it when I'm tightening the nuts up because it's a pain in the neck just to hold it in place. Really need a third hand. Line this up here, and I can feel that come the screw come through. Hold the pinion, and then start it with a screwdriver until it starts to bite. Now I need to use the pliers to finish it up. You want to leave a little bit loose until you're done because you're going to have to move it back and forth a bit. Screw here, goes in. The holes in the frame are tight. And the same thing with the screw here. Like I said, here's where it all gets fun. Just holding the screw. There's not a lot of clearance back here. If you made it any smaller than this, you'd have you'd have to take the Arduino out in order to uh, to get everything in. Okay, and I'm gonna leave it loose like this, so I can hopefully show you how tight my clearance is on that hole through the frame to the pinion gear. There's only the 64th of an inch of clearance there. Um, and I can rotate the frame so that the holes line up. And when I tighten everything down, it's best to have the bearings in place. At least the two. And then I can uh, slide the 
the drive shaft in place. Make sure everything engages. I can tighten this one screw down and then take the shaft take the shaft back out to finish it up. I need a third hand. You want this to be fairly tight. That's why I'm using these nylon screws so that there shouldn't be any motion. Um, I can tell I have good mesh with my teeth and everything seems to be working. So let me uh, pull the shaft back out. There goes the bearing rolling away and I'll tighten that last one up. And I found, when I took it apart, if I come in from the side here I can get the pliers on and uh, engage the side of the frame. Hold that screw tight. Let me uh, and then before you put everything away, double check your fit. Yeah, like I said, fairly tight. You don't want to go too tight because they're nylon. You can strip out the, but you know, tight. Make sure everything still lines up. Put that other bearing in place. And that one will fall out if I don't hold it in place until I epoxy it. But I think the three bearings will give me the most stability. And they're only a dollar and some change a piece. There. Here's where I say it. Now I'm there we go. Nice tight engagement with the teeth, rocking back and forth, no binding. Uh, I can test it without wire tying this back up by just running this header back through. And uh, plugging it back in. To the driver board, plugging the Arduino back into the power supply, turn the power supply on, and no binding, it's really what you're looking for is binding. So go next. Next, next, and now it'll rotate quite a bit. There it goes. So like I said, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, I, I ended up ordering a lot of other parts I ended up using as I was engineering this thing. So I'm going to go figure out what parts I actually did use, um, and uh, I'll put that on my instruction, or on my, um, on my blog article. Um, on the bottom of all my videos, if you look in the description, the top link is always to a related blog article um, where I have links and text and things like that. Um, so go ahead. Um, you know, I'm not guaranteeing if you go ahead and order everything I did, it's going to work just the same. What I have here works and uh, I'm going to go ahead and zip tie this back to the frame over here and it'll be all ready to go again. Um, yeah, if uh, if you like this sort of thing, let me know. I can I uh, I built a um, 1.8 meter long um, uh, Arduino powered uh, time lapse slider um, over the Christmas break, and I'm planning on doing a video on that as well um, for doing you know, time lapse photography. Um, that's using a Maker slide. Um, rail system um, and it mounts my camera 
and these are again an Arduino to uh, to drive everything. Um, and I'm going to use that for a little while. The person who designed the board that I use um, has a new version that came out just after Christmas, and I will probably rebuild with that. Uh, let me put this on top so you can see that's actually rotating. Um, I'll probably rebuild the controller system with that new board sometime um, after I'm done paying for my Christmas. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this thing here, cost-wise, the Arduino is around 20 bucks online. The LCD shield is around uh, 10 dollars, we'll say, give or take. Um, then the uh, the motor, about five of them for 10 bucks, so two dollars for the motor and the driver board, and then. Off the top of my head, I actually have no idea what I spent at Servo City, um, but I will tally it all up. I'm betting, I'll tell you what I'm talking about, uh, 30, maybe 50 or 60 dollars total parts to build, um, which isn't too shabby. Yeah, commercial units that are a couple, are a couple hundred dollars. So uh, I'll finish the video up by. Uh, Recording a time lapse in my backyard or something like that right now, and uh, that'll be my my ending shot. Like I said, if you're interested in this type of stuff, let me know. I know it's way different than my normal channel videos, so I'm trying to to mix it up and try some new things. So yeah, until next time. Thanks for watching.